In terms of delicious food in every city or town, there is always hidden gems that is difficult to find without local guidance. You think that such hidden gems ought to be on every tourist pamphlet? The truth is, you would be more likely to find the obvious tourist trap if you did not try to actually find and hunt those hidden gems yourself. That's why I, Hong, your KK Food Expert for the day, will bring you all along on a journey to try and sample the food less eaten that KK has to offer. So, let's go! Tucked away from the hectic city centre, nestled just beside the river, is the rather laid-back looking establishment of Soup Pin Pin. This place has been in business as far back as our parents could remember. Here is a stark contrast to what you could find in an urban environment. It's a simple, open-air, riverside, natural air-conditioned restaurant. A laid-back feeling for all who come here to enjoy their meal. Morning, today we are at Soup Pin Pin, trying out Soup Pin Pin's famous, well, Soup Pin Pin. Hold up, let me intervene. This soup is not called Soup Pin Pin, as my past self has mistakenly spoken. It's called Chu Chap or Pork Noodle Soup. They come with a variety of pork slices, char siu, um, meatballs, and some pork roll that has been diced up into small pieces. The soup itself was prepared in a way that retains the natural flavour of the meat, which means they didn't use much of uh, any sauces or any additive. Not the wrong kind of additive, mostly they just use salt and the natural pork bone that have been boiling for hours and hours. A natural taste if you would like to put it. If you need some kick into the natural taste, then you can add this crispy fried garlic into the mix. The fragrance alone will overwhelm your senses while stimulating your appetite. The noodles are just firm enough, the meats have the right amount of texture and savoury that perfectly absorb all the goodness within the soup. For any first-timers, I will highly recommend this to go with. Of course, chu chap is not the only food that I order. There are also tofu meatball and pig ear, which are also quite popular and highly unusual. The tofu meatball is a large cube of tofu with a huge ball of pork in the middle of a warm broth. The soft and jiggly tofu is nicely enveloped the whole meatball, and the way to eat it is to bite a big chunk of it so to feel the gush of the juices within the meat. But do be careful not to eat it too quickly or you had your tongue burn. For the pig ears, they're a bit hard to describe, but basically it's a combination of soft and chewiness that somewhat made it addicting to eat. What's more, the sweet sauce really complements the whole thing and it makes you forget that you're eating pig ears. So if you're looking to try something different, then why not give these piggy ears a try? Who knows, you might like it. With those three delicious goodies stuff inside my belly, it's time to say goodbye to our breakfast and continue the journey for the second breakfast. Alright, here in another place where we're gonna have nasi lemak. As you know, nasi lemak is a Malaysian's common dish or if you can say a national dish of Malaysia. For those who doesn't know what nasi lemak is, it's basically a fragrance rice cooked in coconut milk and pandan leaves that comes with a choice of meat. Usually it's served with chicken and, well actually mostly chicken, but in certain places they serve with other meat as well. In this shop, they serve with roast pork or char siu or whatever other meats you prefer, roast duck or something else here. Their famous specialty is roast pork. Nasi lemak roast pork, to be precise. Here, the dish is served in a small plate with a nicely arranged ingredients. You have, of course, fragrance rice, the nicely sliced roast pork, eggs, sambal, peanuts, cucumbers, and the smell. You can always tell if someone is eating nasi lemak, as the smell is quite distinctive. Yes, roast pork and sambal. Mmm, salty, umami, and a bit of spiciness brings out the whole flavor of a roast pork. Coupled with the rice and cucumber and some peanuts, makes the whole dish as one. 
Yes, the amalgamation of flavors in one dish, that's what nasi lemak is. Still, eating two heavy breakfasts has made my throat yearn for some refreshment. So in the next stop, I will be having this. It's green, it has black jellies, milk, pandan, and it comes in a large glass. This is chinchao pandan and it's one of my favorite afternoon drinks. So this drink is refreshing for me. It's, like, it's not too sweet and especially in the hot or rainy weather like this, it's equally delectable. So in a normal cases, I usually finish this in a go. Usually that is. Since the weather is a bit gloomy and wet outside, it feels just the right mood to slowly enjoy this favorite drink of mine. After enjoying my drink throughout the whole rain, I reach the last destination for the day. And coming up first is satay. A skewer marinated meat on a stick that is being slowly grilled over charcoal and is served with a peanut sauce for extra flavor. It is widely eaten locally and most of Southeast Asia. The appeal of a food being prepared in front of you is always satisfying and satay is no exception to this. By looking on how it is grilled, one is surely but slowly being drawn into it. The seasoning sound and the juices dripping on the charcoal. Somehow, it makes you forget everything around you and just stare at it. Once that lengthy process is done, the satay is served before you on the plate alongside with the peanut butter sauce. One thing that I like the satay here is how well the meat is marinated. This means my mouth will be overcome with joy when it reaches in me. Soft, juicy, moist, sweet, flavorful are the immediate things I can think of when biting into them. The satay comes with three types of meat, chicken, beef and lamb. And my personal favorite is by far the beef. If the flavor is somewhat isn't enough, then dip the satay in the peanut sauce and you can feel your taste buds starting to dance on the tongue, while your hand won't stop moving while shoving satay after satay into the mouth. And that is what precisely I'm doing now. Truthfully, if my dinner consists of satay only, I certainly won't mind. Just right to the satay stand is our next foodie, one that may not be well known compared to the other dishes. But the ikan bakar or charcoal grilled fish is common around here if you know where to look for. It is prepared by an uncle who is in this business for decades. The process started by applying oil on banana leaf, throw in a seasoned fish and let it grill until both sides is cooked. Then add sambal sauce onto it. Finally, garnish it with a handful of stir-fried onion and there you have it, a freshly made ikan bakar. The strong fragrance of the fish aroused my appetite as soon as it arrived on the table, and I request the sambal to be set aside as my body doesn't take spiciness too well. Squeeze some lime onto it and you're ready to go. The taste of the fish can be only described with one word, amazing. It's tender, juicy, and has every flavor seems into every part of it. And adding a bit of sambal into the mix, the whole flavor of the fish just got better. The additional spices combined with the onions made every bite refreshing and soon enough, the whole fish was gone like in a couple of minutes. By this point, my tummy is stuffed with all the goodies that I've been eating throughout the whole day. Just when I was about to call it a day, an owner of a neighboring shop offered me this golden treasure. Without second thought, I just went along and graciously accept their gesture. A mountain of golden strand curling with a hint of redness, all known by its common name, the dry buttermilk prawn. A simple but mouth-watering dish that combines the crispy fried prawn, buttermilk, sweet and salty flavored egg floss. And the end result is what I call beautiful. Still, Prawn is not my type of seafood when it comes to eating underwater creatures, but given that the aroma is very tempting, what I'm having here in my hand is the awesome dry butter prawn. Slightly deep fried, coated with buttermilk. So let the my face expression do all the talking. Mm. Mm. Wow. Yes, you can tell from my expression that the prawn is 
I'm doing. As my brain is struggling to find words to describe the flavor. Just as the name suggests, the salty butter creamy sauce, the sweetness of the crispy prawn, plus the twisting layer of the salted egg makes this all a zesty food to munch on. Still, as much as I love to eat more of them, I just feel too full for it. Luckily, my friend behind the camera is born with two stomachs and is happy to finish off the Golden Mountain alone. With this, we have come to the end of our food less eaten journey for the day. And hopefully, you all have a clear idea of what to try, either for those who are planning to travel here or those who reside here but looking for something new to explore. Thank you for watching till the end. Subscribe and press the like button. And I'll see you all in the next video.